be prepared for this not to be a traditional election. It is very possible that we're not going to know who the winner is on, on election night. And I just want to tell everyone, like, it's okay. It doesn't mean that that they're like throwing out vote votes or that the whole thing is going to be fraudulent. Just trust the process. Just get involved and and just like be be prepared. So. Can you explain to everyone who might be confused about this, what happens in between November 3rd and January 20th? Here is kind of how it goes. So it starts with understanding that we don't fundamentally have the right to vote for president. That sounds weird, but it's true. And this means that us voting for president, we're not directly voting for president. We are voting for people in our state, electors, to then vote for president. And we only get to do that because our state legislators said, hey, that's how we're gonna choose the electors. But for the first hundred years uh, of our country, state legislators chose the electors themselves and people like us didn't have anything to do with it. There was no popular vote. So it's only been since 1880 that all of us, every state uh, has had a popular vote for president. So what that does is we, we vote on November 3rd or hopefully before early voting, uh, all, all the different ways we can as early as possible. Um, we vote, we cast our vote in, uh, in our state and uh, uh, that depends, that determines whether or not a, a, a democratic slate of electors or a Republican slate of electors uh, gets picked. And then between the uh, date of uh, November 3rd and December 8th, uh, states have the ability to make changes to how they pick the electors. If there's a controversy, they can settle them. Um, so there's about six weeks where they can figure this out. But then on December 14th, all of the electors are going to meet in their state and actually cast their electoral votes. And what they're going to do is they're going to meet in their state capital uh, and they're going to actually vote directly for president and also vice president as separate, separate votes, separate ballots. And then those votes are going to be sent to the president of the Senate, who is Mike Pence, also the vice president. Um, and on January 6th at 1 p.m., uh, Mike Pence is going to count the electoral votes in the presence of Congress. And it's going to be the new Congress because they're sworn in on January 3rd. So they're going to be watching this vote count and there may be issues, there may be controversies, and then those controversies are settled. Um, and the idea is that in order to become president, uh, you have to get a majority of electoral votes. So there are 538 electors total. Uh, there's an amount for each state and also for DC. DC gets three. Uh, and you need 270 electoral votes to win both the presidency and for the vice president, you also need 230 or 270 electoral votes. If nobody gets 270 electoral votes for president, either there's a 269-269 tie or some third candidate splits the vote and no one hits 270, then the House of Representatives chooses the president. And how they do it is that each state gets one vote. So not each member of the House, so that we know California has 53 members of the House, Wyoming has one, it doesn't matter. California gets one vote in this process, Wyoming gets one vote in this process. Uh, and you need 26 to win a majority of states. If no one gets 274 vice president, the Senate decides, and you need 67 senators uh, uh, to, to, um, uh, uh, to vote. Oh, I'm sorry, 51 senators to, to vote, a, a majority of all the, of all the senators. So um, this is a crazy process. And this is actually how the president is, is and the vice president are, are elected. So. What I would say to people who are confused about what I just said or, or, or are still trying to make sense of how we vote for president is to pay attention to a couple of days. One is obviously November 3rd, but the odds that we know who wins the presidency on November 3rd are, are, are almost non-existent. Um, so I would say pay attention to December 8th, uh, which is the last chance that states could make changes to the electors. Uh, December 14th, which is the actual vote when they, when they vote. And then January 6th, when the votes are counted. And then whoever wins uh, the presidency, either most electoral votes or the, the House and the, and the Senate picking the president and vice president, they're sworn in on January 20th. I'm going to yeah. jump in with one thing. The reason, and it's really important for people to understand, the reason we're not going to know on November 3rd who won is because so many more people will be voting by mail than ever before. There's something wrong with it, but it's really important to know if it takes a few days or even a few weeks for us to to know who won the popular vote for the presidency, that's okay. Keep calm, have a drink, chill yeah. the F out. It's totally fine. 
Keep calm. You've already done your work. You've had your wine. Like just exactly. 